All right, so there are about 20 people <laughs> in in uh, the our Google Meet now. So I think we can start. All right, uh, so that the faster we start, the faster we finish lah. Madam, kawan yes? saya nak masuk. Oh, okay. Siapa nama kawan kita tu? Natalie. Oh, uh, tapi si ada keluarnya. You, usually. Oh, okay. Dia dah masuk dah, Madam. Dah, so Alhamdulillah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. So uh, let's start now. Okay. So uh, this is chapter nine, forecasting technique. Um, now, uh, usually in businesses, we need to forecast for the future. The reason because uh, we need to manage future expectation. For example, let's say you have a company that is selling uh, cakes, contohnya. Alright, so of course your raw materials, kita asyikkan beli every day. Kan? Your raw materials, kalau boleh, kita akan minimize the amount of time kita belilah. Let's say it's once a week or two times a week. Uh, so you need to forecast how much raw materials do, do you need for the following week. Uh, so this is forecasting technique. Eh? Uh, certain industries, uh, kalau industri kecil macam jual cake is fine lah. Uh, si cukup you can pergi ke kedai and uh, beli beli lagi your baking supply. Tapi certain other industries, for example like the automotive industry, kereta nak. So they have to focus, uh, do really good forecasting. The reason being is that uh, let's say they want to build a new factory. Uh, how how much uh, capacity can the factory accommodate? Nah, nya si dapat jua build something yang so ambitious, tapi demand si ada, kan? Uh, uh, another example is macam building of airports. Huh? For example, like Malaysia, we started with the Subang Airport, which is a really small airport. Nah, huh? alright. Uh, so we started with the Subang Airport, uh, and then after that, we discover that it's not enough. Uh, in terms of capacity. So what did we do? We built another airport which is KLIA, right? Uh, uh, which has uh, bergada-ganda lah pun capability for flights and passengers and whatnot. And then they discovered that, eh, si cukup jua KLIA. They had to build KLIA too. Uh, so that is forecasting technique. For example, a country like Malaysia, we cannot be building airports every 10 years. Can when you build an airport, it's supposed to last you for maybe 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Uh, so this is forecasting. Eh? Uh, so there are three categories of forecasting, qualitative and judgmental, statistical time series, and explanatory model. Eh? All right, so qualitative and judgmental rely on experience and intuition. So this one looks at your own experience. Lah. How are you able to predict? You would know because you are in the business. Eh? So they are necessary when historical data is not available and when predictions are needed far into the future. The historical analogy approach obtains a forecast through comparative analysis with the previous situation. Can what happened before? Tapi sometimes you do not have the before pun experience. Eh? For example, macam kita pun uh, bakery te, let's say you want to create a second branch. Uh, establish a second branch and then you want to predict lah, is your second branch going to disrupt your current business or not? Meaning let's say kita sebelum tu kita biasa sales dalam 10,000 sehari for your current bakery. Okay, if you open a second branch, would it contribute to an additional of 10,000 or would it be old branch 5,000, new branch 5,000? Can uh, So you don't want that lah. So, uh, the Delphi method questions an anonymous panel of experts two, three times in order to reach a convergence of opinion on the forecasted variable. All right, uh, one example, predicting the price of oil. In 1988, uh, oil was $22 per barrel. In, uh, in the middle of the year, it dropped half, okay, because of oversupply. All right, so apabila oversupply, OPEC, which is the uh, apa, the group kan, of oil producing countries, uh, what they would do is they would raise the price of oil. Nya akan tahan nya pun supply. Nya akan simpanlah dalam nya pun warehouse. 
Ah, uh, so historical analogy would forecast a higher price. Kan? Especially when people are saying that, oh, we don't have enough oil in 50 years, uh, kita seda lagi sumber petroleum and whatnot. Uh, prices of oil would technically go up lah. However, uh, prices continue to drop. Even recently, waktu MCO, kan, the prices of oil pun turun. Uh, so, it shows that uh, sometimes you cannot rely on historical analogies. Eh? Indicators and indexes. So, indicators are measures that are believed to influence the behavior of a variable we wish to forecast. Eh? So, indicators are often combined into an index. So, an index is a single measure. For example, Bursa Malaysia pun index, eh? a BSKL kan? So, uh, the index comprises, it's a single number, but it comprises of 30 of the biggest stock in the stock market. Uh, so, it provides a measure, hanya uh, jadi representative of the stock market. Eh? Alright, another one is GDP. So, GDP is an indicator that measures the value of goods and services produce. Eh? So, GDP is also uh, apa nama, an indicator for economic development, meaning if our GDP goes up, we can safely predict that the economic development in the country is going up. So, however, there's a cycle eh, for GDP. So, forecasting GDP is often done using the indicators, all right, uh, leading indicators and lagging indicators. So, these are some of the examples of indicators that may influence GDP. One of them is formation of business enterprise, meaning makin banyak business yang diwujudkan, GDP sepatutnya makin bertambah because economy berkembang. Alright, percentage of change in money supply. So, this one is the banking pun, uh, apa nama, a variable whereby uh, according to economic theory, we predict that uh, if uh, the government wants us to spend, uh, if the government wants us to spend, they would increase the money supply. All right. This is the simple law of demand and supply. Eh? All right. Uh, lagging indicator, uh, business investment expenditure, meaning apabila sesuatu perniagaan, they spend eh, uh, to uh, increase their sales and whatnot, we expect that in the future, the sales of the company will go up. If sales go up, of course, at the end of the day, GDP will go up. Huh? The prime rate, this is the borrowing rate, okay, and the inventories on hand. Huh? So, leading indicator was developed by Department of Commerce. This one is in the US, all right. So, these indicators, they are available uh, dalam conferenceboard.org. Examples are average manufacturing hours, orders for consumer goods, building permits, and stock prices. Eh? Uh, statistical forecasting models. So, we usually have time series, all right, our data. Uh, and then time series usually is random. It can go up or do down. It has seasonal effect and it has cyclical effect. Eh? So, uh, stationary time series, it only has random behavior. Uh, so, whereby... Trends, the seasonal effect and the cyclical effect dibuang eh, daripada that time series. So, this is an example of identifying trends in the time series. So, what you can do is for your exercise, uh, let me see if I can find it. Uh, is it this one? Bursa Station, no. Uh, I used to have, uh, yeah. Uh, Madam, anya to? Ah, okay. Uh, so, Madam ada ngambi this uh, WDI, uh, World Bank pun data. Okay. So, let's say this is the data from China from 2008 until 2013. Alright. So, this is GDP, China, GDP for Lebanon. Uh. So, let's just see whether the movement of uh, GDP is random or not. One way we can do it is by uh, creating a line chart. All 
All right, so let's create one. These are the values. And then let's create another one for Lebanon. And these are the values. All right, so you can see that there's a big difference between GDP of China and GDP of Lebanon. So you cannot really see the trend. So one thing we can do is we can move China to uh, the second axis. All right, now you can see a better trend. Okay, so um, you can see that uh, this is the GDP of the two countries. I think this is China, the blue one, and this is Lebanon, uh, the red one. So China, yang nampak lurus, is simply because the value besar. All right, uh, let me try to... Uh, let me see if I can change this. All right. Oh, okay, not that one, this one. Uh -huh. All right, so you can see it's quite huge. And uh, you boleh kecikkan the value. Uh, and let's see this one. Mm. All right, so the value is quite big. Um, and then another thing we can do is we can actually reduce this. We can put a minimum of, let's say, the, is it 30 million? All right, anyway, so what I wanted to show you is that uh, when you are looking at uh, certain values, all right, especially something like GDP, uh, if, if uh, data is a lebih dekat, uh, you can actually see it will go up and down, up and down. Eh? It depends. Uh, the reason being is because there's a cycle, there's a trend inside our data. All right. Now, uh, what is a seasonal effect? Uh, all right. So, seasonal effect is one that is repetitive, okay, uh, at fixed interval of the time. For example, the bursa, uh, you might have a Monday effect. You might have January effect. You might have, uh, apa nama? Uh, we call it festivities pun effect, huh? Uh, so, there are certain effects, uh, for example, apabila dekat-dekat dengan musim perayaan, you will see a lot of selling of stocks. Uh, the reason being is that people need money to spend for those festivities. Eh? Uh, so, that is seasonal effect. So, it it happens at certain times of the year and it is quite uh, apa nama? regular. Lah. Okay. 
Uh, another one is cyclical effect. So cyclical effect is uh, usually a longer time frame uh, such as several years. So for example, like our economic downturn, that is a cyclical effect. Uh, all right. Uh, forecasting models for stationary uh, time series, one is moving average, another one is exponential smoothing. Uh, all right. So moving average, uh, it's a simple moving average method whereby we smooth uh, the data dengan menjadi sebagai purata. So let's say if you have uh, this data, all right, so this is uh, yearly data. So what you do is kita tukarkan yang menjadi purata untuk setiap lima tahun ataupun purata untuk setiap empat tahun, all right. Uh, so... Uh, a simple moving average forecast for the next period is computed like this. Alright, basically, let's say Madam tunjukkan dengan kita orang. So, let's say Madam ambil this value. Okay, let's put it here. Alright, so this was in year 2008. Huh? Alright, so uh, the moving average pun data, let me delete this. Alright, so you have the data now. So the moving average data, so this is uh, China's GDP. All right, so this is annual data. So let's say we take a moving average of four years. So what it does is that, all right, so the first value is equal to AVE, average function, and you take four years. Okay. And then after that, Okay, so and then what you will see is that uh, the values akan less volatile. Eh? So the first one is the average of the four years. Okay, uh, so that means nya tambahkan satu, dua, tiga, empat, tambah, bagi empat. And then the second one is the average of these four years. Alright, satu, dua, tiga, empat, bagi empat. And the third one is the average of these four years. So what's going to happen is that you, you will see that the movement of the data now becomes less volatile. Eh? The reason being is that nya di smoothen out. Nya di ambil purata empat tahun, empat tahun, empat tahun. Eh? So this is the moving average pun model. Eh? Okay. Uh, so this is an example. So this is nya pun daily. Uh, I don't think we have this data. But this is nya pun uh, weekly, a uh, weekly data. So, what they do is, instead of the weekly data, they ambil nya three period moving average forecast. So, they have this data. Uh, so, they ambil nya one, two, three. Uh, this is the new value. Eh? Okay, one, two, three. And this is the new value. So, instead of naik turun yang so high, so it becomes smoother. Alright. So, the trend is still there. It's just that it's not as volatile. Alright, so that is moving average. Okay, um, another one is we can use the moving average tool. Alright, uh, let me just show you the example. Uh, you have this data set. You just go to data, data analysis, and moving average. Alright, uh, so this is available in data analysis. So you just click OK. So you input range. Alright, you select all and then you inform them the interval. Eh? So interval, is it 4 tahun, is it 3 tahun, is it 2 tahun and what not. And you can have a chart output. So let's try this one. Alright, uh, and then let's put 4 tahun. 
And then let's also get a chart, output and standard error. Uh, output range. Uh, okay, let me them check about it. Oh, okay. Let's put it here. All right. So it has calculated for me. So the first three years nyangka NA simply because nyambi satu, dua, tiga, empat and they put the value here. So you can see that the value is sama lah sebenarnya. Alright. Uh, sama lah. Uh, so it's just that lingkahnya di belakang lah. Uh, so that is another way of uh, using the moving average pun function okay, dalam data analysis. However, uh, we do not recommend using the chart or error option because the forecast generated by these two are not properly aligned to the data. Eh? All right. Uh, error tricks. Uh, so this one is just some uh, examples deviation from the mean. So meaning apabila kita pola uh, menukar lah, apabila kita mengubah data kita daripada your original data into a smoothing data. So what's going to happen is uh, there are going to be some uh, error, okay? Uh, so these are the types of error that you might face. Mean absolute deviation. So maksudnya ber, ber, bertapa jauhnya the new value dengan the old value, uh, the average. Yeah. Uh, mean square error, root mean square error and mean absolute, absolute percentage error. All right, so uh, this is one example. Do you have this data set? Do you guys know whether we have this tablet computer sales data set? Are you guys there? Oh, we don't have. All right. So it's okay. Madam boleh explain. Say that. All right, uh, so it's okay. Uh, I can explain to you guys. So basically, in this example, you have the tablet computer sales and you have the unit sold. So what they do is nyapola average untuk 4 minggu. 88 tambah 44 tambah 60. Eh, 3 minggu, sorry. Tambah 60 bahagi 3. So they get the forecast value of 66. And then after that, they calculate the error. That means uh, what is the difference between the actual value and the forecasted value. In this case, is negative 6. 60 tolak 6. Eh? Alright. So, they get the error. So, this is the absolute division. That means betapa jauhnya from the actual value. They square the error. So, you get the squared error. And then this is the absolute percentage of the error. Eh? Okay. Uh, and then uh, this is for K2. This is for K3. Meaning, nya tambah gian, tambahkan lagi one more uh, note ya. So, untuk, untuk 8844-60. So, you get this one. For the next one is 88-44-60-58 bahagi 4. So, you get 64. Alright. So, this is the error. 64 minus 52. Uh, uh, sorry, 52 minus 64. De deviation, squared error and absolute error. So, this one is just to show the error lah. The walaupun kita pola forecasting, yes, of course lah. Logically, there will be some differences between the actual data and the forecasted data. So this one usually happens to us in UITM. Just to share with you, all right. Uh, usually every semester, uh, our KPP will try to forecast how many new students are going to uh, register for Bachelor of Finance program. Alright, so based on the forecast, so KPP akan buka group lah, group uh, apa nama A, B, C ya. Yeah. Uh, so if nya forecast that okay, there's going to be about 90 students coming in, so akan buka tiga group. There's going to be about 60 students, akan buka dua group. Uh, so sometimes they can be forecast error. So that's why uh, in your first semester, you might discover that, oh kena kelas tok besar, kena kelas tok kecil. Uh, the reason being is that, KPP forecasted it to be 30-30. However, yang register sit sama. And then sometimes you also have second intake. 
whereby uh, sepatutnya dalam list KPP 30 tetapi sistem di YTM yang accept more than 30. Huh? Uh, so that is error lah. Uh, so exponential smoothing model. So kita guna exponential. Alright. Uh, so whereby F is the forecast time period. Uh, and then uh, A is the observed value. And alpha is the constant between 0 to 1. So this one guna exponential model. Alright. Uh, so this is how you do it. Of course we are not really going to go into it. Uh, sebab apa namanya. For your syllabus, uh, technically Madam mengajar sampai regression aja. But this is one of the things that you can, ya iyalah. Uh, so what you can see is that uh, this is nya pun smoothing constant. Eh? So whereby you have uh, 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%, 50%, 60%, 70%, 80%, 90%. Eh? Alright, uh, so uh, what they do is they have these values, alright, from the units sold. Uh, and then, Madam pun si tak apa di pola. <laughs> Alright, uh, let me try to see. Uh, I don't know how do they get these values. Um, whereby for week 1, at eh, week 3, it's equal to alpha 0 0.7. 1 minus 0 0.7 times 88 plus alpha 0 0.7 times 44. Alright, so uh, I do not know really how do they get these numbers. Huh. Oh, this one. Alright, so uh, let's try to see if we can understand it. So it seems like the forecast model starts at week 3, I suppose. Uh, I'm not sure. Okay, unfortunately. Uh, so it's okay, we just continue first. All right. Um, so the forecast using uh, 0 0.6 provides uh, the lowest error metric. So what they do is they have all these error, MAD, MSE and MAPE, which is from these formulas. Okay. Alpha and the forecasted value tadi. And then they discover that the forecast value of 0 0.6 provides the lowest error eh, compared to the others. All right. Uh, which is the deviation from the mean is 14.71. Uh, so they are saying that, okay, this is the best model for forecasting. All right. Uh, another one is we can use data analysis exponential smoothing. All right. Uh, so we can go back to our data. We go to data analysis and then we go up to exponential smoothing. Eh? All right. So you click OK. So you give the input range, which is your original data set, okay, and then you key in your damping factor, all right, and then tick labels untuk yang di atas. So what, what are the damping factor, all right, uh, so damping factor is 1 minus alpha. So it depends on you, macam tu tadi, this is nya pun alpha, eh? all right, 0 0.1 ka, 0 0.2 ka, 0 0.3, it's up to you, okay. So it will come up with an output for you lah. Alright. So that one is using the Excel data analysis tool. Uh, so in this case, so you can see that the results are still being smoothened. Kan? Alright. Tapi it's closer to the actual data set. Alright. Uh, forecasting models for time series with a linear trend. Uh, so this one, kita anggap data yang bergerak dalam satu garis lurus. Eh? Alright, so where F is your forecast, uh, A is your, uh, let me see. Eh? A, if I'm not mistaken, is the uh, yang apa yang terkena pada paksi Y. Eh? Uh, and then uh, B is your coefficient lah, ataupun your slope. Alright. 
Uh, so estimates, uh, this is double exponential smoothing. So these are just uh, methods of doing forecasting. Eh? So estimates from the parameters are obtained from the following equation. All right. So initial values are chosen for A, uh, B. All right. And the equation uh, must be used to compute A and B for the entire time. The series is able to generate forecast into the future. Eh? All right. So this is an example. So they have the original data set, okay, total tons of coal production, which we don't have the data set as well. And then uh, they have defined that the alpha is 0 0.6, the beta is 1 minus alpha, lah. okay, so it's 0 0.4, okay. Uh, and then they take the values of total tons as, uh, let me see. As the alpha pun value, all right. Tapinya ada slightly different, I think, towards the end. All right. Now, this is the trend and this is the forecasted value. Okay. And this is the every, uh, absolute error, which is the deviation from the mean. Eh? Uh, so, you can see that uh, the forecast is still able to follow the actual pun uh, value lah, quite close. All right, a uh, simple linear regression can be applied to forecasting using time as the independent variable. So this is one example. So the actual value ada naik turun macam to, begigi gigi we call it. Uh, however, we predict that it goes up in a straight line. So this one made ada ajar ya, whereby you uh, you in insert a trend into your chart and then you ask uh, Excel to come up with the uh, model. Eh? All right. So this one, for example, let's say this is China pun GDP tech. All right. So what you can do is, uh, let's, okay, let's change it to scatter plot. All right. So you have the dots and then what you do is, all right. Uh, insert trend line, linear trend line. All right, so come Excel gives you a line like this, and then you right click, format trend line, and then you ask Excel to give you a model, eh? display equation on the chart. All right, so this is it. Oh, that So this is your. This is your equation. Eh? Alright. Uh, so this one yang sepatutnya berjuta-juta lah. I don't know nyangkah. Kena nyangkah tak. E plus ya. Eh? Uh, so it's it's supposed to be 6 billion something plus 4 billion something. Eh? Alright. Uh, so this one is the same. Uh, you want a, a, a model on your line. And you also want the R square, you can ask Excel to give it to you. Eh? All right, so autocorrelation in time series. When autocorrelation is present, so or your data might be correlated uh, with one another. Eh? For example, if nya naik tinggi, and the next one akan naik jua. If nya turun, agak besar, the next one pun akan turun jua. Eh? All right. So autoregression, yes, it happens in certain data sets. Uh, for example, apabila hujan, banjir. Uh, so something like that lah. Okay. Uh, forecasting time series with seasonality. When the time series exhibit seasonality, different techniques provide better forecast than what we have described. We can have multiple regression models. Okay. And we can have Hulk winter models. Huh? All right. So this is an example, gas and electric uh, Excel file. Huh? So we want to compare the months, all right, uh, bulan dan penggunaan uh, gas. The uh, this is uh, if I'm not mistaken a US or a UK data set uh, whereby sidak not nangga because in UK when it gets very cold, uh, the residents what they do is they use the heater, kan? Uh, so heater tu ni ada dua jenis. Sama ada heater kita uh, jenis yang gas ataupun jenis yang pakai elektrik. 
untuk memanaskan rumah. Uh, so they wanted to see the impact of the months and the use. Uh, so you can see that uh, hujung tahun, alright, uh, so gas is used higher compared to tengah tahun. The reason being is that because it's cold. Kan? So bila sejuk, uh, so what people do is they will turn on the heater. Alright. So we can construct the regression model using dummy variables. Okay. Uh, and then this is what, what they do. This is data set for January, data set for February, March, April, May, June. Eh? So uh, apabila it's data set for January, all the other months nyangkah as kosong. Because it's not February, it's not March, it's not April and whatnot. Eh? If it's a data set for February, so February nyangkah satu and all the other months nyangkah kosong. Eh? So this is the creation of a dummy variable lah. So using binary numbers. So if satu ada, if kosong, tidak ada. Eh? Alright. Mm, and then what they do is, uh, they created the chart. Okay, they ask uh, Excel to do the regression. So apabila Excel keluarkan regression, then you have all the different months. Okay, all the different months, the coefficient. And then you check the p-value. Is it significant or not? And then you check this significance f. All right. So uh, the final regression results, uh, time and February were in significant. Eh? So you can see that, uh, oh, February said this. I think they already deleted lah. All right. Untuk February pun. All right. Uh, another one is Hope Winter Model for Forecasting Time Series with Seasonality. All right. Uh, so this model uh, uses F equal to alpha plus the season S. All right. So it's a multiplicative seasonality model with no trend. So uh, the forecast is equal to alpha uh, times S. And then a chart of the time series should be viewed first to identify the type of model to use. Eh? So I know this sounds very technical. Uh, it's just that uh, on your part, you're just supposed to know lah. Okay. Kelak mun madam ada nyapun data set then maybe we can try. Uh, madam cari dulu lah. Uh, so the level and seasonal factors are estimated as this is the level component and the seasonal component and the forecast for the next period is forecast equal to alpha plus the season. Lah. Alright. So estimate the level and seasonal factors for the first S periods, the length of the season. And we use smoothing equation to update the alpha and the seasonal factor and calculate the forecast. Eh? So this is the example of the gas and electric data set. Okay. So whereby nya tetapkan alpha as 0.4 and lambda. Alright. Bukan beta. Lambda as 0.9. So let's see. I don't know why it's so small. Alright. So... You can see that, uh, so they have the months, all right, and they try to forecast for the next year. Uh, so this is the forecast pun, uh, values lah for the next year. Eh? Okay, uh, so this is the period, bulan pertama, kedua, ketiga, okay, dan seterusnya. The usage of gas, this is nya pun actual data, okay, level for alpha, okay, and then level for lambda, eh? all right. Uh, and then using that, they try to calculate the forecast values for the next year. Eh? So how much gas would people use? And then this is the deviation from the mean. Okay. All right. Uh, the multiplicative seasonal model has the same basic smoothing structure. Okay. But uh, some differences. Uh, the forecast for the next period is forecast equal to alpha darab dengan S. Eh? Alright. So, they find the values for level and seasonal factors. Alright. Okay. Uh, it applies to time series with relatively stable seasonality and is based on the equation. Eh? Uh, so, the model applies to time series whose amplitude the increases or decreases over time. 
So how can you apply this, let's say in a country like Malaysia? So you know that macam Malaysia technically sepatutnya tengah tahun panas lah. Walaupun now tengah hujan lah. Alright, tengah tahun panas. So you you can compare with data dengan penggunaan air contohnya. Ataupun electricity as well because nowadays apabila panas people switch on the aircon. Kan? Uh, so you want to try to see the seasonality effect of electricity cons consumption in Malaysia. And then you you see lah uh, berapa bilnya bulan January, February, March, April, May and so on. Uh, technically according to theory for for uh, this subject kan uh, technically should be January, February, March kurang lah penggunaan electricity because it's the cooler months. Uh, so uh, May, April, June. Sepatutnya electricity is higher because those are the hotter months. Eh? Okay. Uh, the additive seasonality model with a trend. Alright. So they have the level component, the trend component and the seasonal component. Eh? So the forecast for the period is the alpha plus beta plus the season. Alright. And the, the forecast after the last period Okay, is S plus K. Eh? So the initial values for level and seasonal factors are the same. Alright, so the initial values for the trend component beta is equal to 1 divided by the season sum of alpha minus the previous alpha divided by the season. Alright, so this is another example of new car sale. So you have the actual values. Alright, and then you want to forecast the following year pun values. Eh? Alright, so what they did is they take the values, the actual values and then they calculated the forecast. Alright, uh, so uh, because they are saying that in this data set, nya ada trend, nya ada the, the actual demand, the trend and the seasonal uh, component. Eh? Uh, so this one is actually true untuk automotive industry whereby usually there will be an increase of sales sebelum waktu perayaan. So I don't know why lah, mungkin orang mau berjalan raya pakai kereta baru ke apa. Alright, but there is in Malaysia, there is an increase in car sales before festive period. Alright, and then there will be a decrease in car sales after the festive period. So this can be the seasonal component, whereby the season is not the exact months, but the season can be when are the festivities. Eh? Alright, uh, so this is the forecasted value that is calculated. Alright, uh, so multiplicative model is similar to the additive model but with a trend component. So basically, uh, there are two types of model. Sigit nya main tambah, sigit nya main darab. Eh? Alright. Uh, so the forecast for the period A plus B times S, all right, and the forecast beyond the last period will be A plus B times S, right? Tapi minus S plus K. Eh? So initialization is performed in the same way. Uh, the model can be implemented in the same uh, way in the on the spreadsheet. Eh? All right. So selecting the appropriate time series based on forecasting method, you have to know whether your data set nya ada trend ataupun nya ada trend. Uh, so, if ada trend, then kita can use the moving average. If, uh, sorry, if nya set ada trend, you can use the moving average. If nya ada trend, then you can use double exponential smoothing. Eh? If ada seasonality, then you can use the Hulk Winters model. Eh? Alright, uh, so uh, regression forecasting with causal models. Okay, in many forecasting application, other independent variables other than time, uh, uh, contoh economic index or demographic factors may influence the time series. All right, uh, explanatory or causal models, often called econometric models, seek to identify factors uh, that try to explain patterns uh, in the variable. So sometimes, let's say in business, you want to identify why do people uh, come to your shop or come to your restaurant, for example. So uh, there are some other explanatory models. So some people may think, oh, because of the food. Contoh, huh? uh, so if kedai makan, oh, makanan sedap. Yes, orang pergi. But there could also be some other 
explanatory reasons. Uh, one of them could be the location. Another one could be the ambience, the decor, nya kaca. Eh? Uh, another one could be the service, the fast service. So your food may not be as tasty as uh, the next shop, alright? Ataupun yang si super nyaman, we call it. Tapi uh, it could be because uh, your service is very fast. So people are willing to accommodate lah because of that. Eh? Alright, uh, so this is another example. Gasoline sales, all right, simple trend line using week as the independent variable, number of weeks and sales, eh? all right. So they want to predict the sales for the week 11, dekat sebelah tot lah, all right. So for you to do prediction, uh, what they do is they try to, apa nama, uh, uh, use this model lah, y equal to 812.99. Uh, X plus 4790.1 So X to nyangka S 11 Because that is the value pada minggu yang ke 11 That is the prediction Alright, uh, incorporating causal variables in the regression based model So the average price per gallon changes each week It may influence customer sales Average price per gallon is a causal variable so they try to develop a linear regression model to predict gas gasoline sales using both time and the price per gallon. Eh? All right. Uh, so they come out with a regression and this is the model. Eh? Okay. Uh, this one. Uh, so this is the predicted sales for week 11, which is 72333. Okay. Plus 508 darab week ke-11 minus 16463 darab dengan 3 ringgit 8 harga eh 1 gallon all right so the pra uh, practice of forecasting judgmental and qualitative methods are used for forecasting sales of product lines and broad company and industry forecast simple time series models are used for short term and medium range forecast regression methods are used for the long term forecast all right, so we have completed chapter 9. Do you have any questions? Ataupun are you guys sleeping? Still here, madam. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so uh, this part memang uh, uh, slightly boring because the regression part which is uh, for your assignment is done. All right, so for this part, it's it's more towards uh, understanding the concepts and the things that you can do in Excel. All right. Uh, your assignment tadi is the regression part. Yes, uh, which you have done. All right, uh, so that one, no worries. Okay. So, alright. So, Madam, sampai situ ajak for today. For those yang mau tidur, te, <laughs> uh, you can sleep now. <laughs> alright, everyone. Enjoy your weekend and see you next week. Eh? Alright. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Madam.